This is Robin with Heroes Legends Studios, and I've been working on an RPG Maker MZ game, and finally getting really close to wrapping up. So, wanted to show the process on how to deploy and run your game on an iOS device. Uh, the process is very simple, but there are some prerequisites that you are you will need, and that's first. This process will work with MZ and MV. Uh, you'll need a Mac, of course. Hopefully you're running the latest operating system. If not, uh, the process may be different. Uh, I'm going to run with the, the latest and greatest. You'll need an iOS device and, of course, Xcode 12. Um, again, Xcode 12 is the latest. I'll be showing the process for that. The Xcode 11 process is different. That's uh, last year's version. And I'll post some links of the ori original thread that I found that made this tutorial very easy to follow. And I just wanted to make a video of this process. Uh, you also need a developer account through Apple, which is you're going to be charged $99, an annual fee for your developer license. Uh, I believe Android is with Google's developer account. It's $25, and I believe it's just a one-time fee. But for Apple, unfortunately, it is $90, $99 per year uh, in order to publish and keep your apps on the store. Uh, I am a iOS developer myself, so I already have the developer license. I've had it for several years. And so I'm going to walk through some other items that are going to be very important that the tutorial that I found doesn't Talk, necessary talk about but it, it is a fantastic tutorial and I'll post that in the description of this video uh, so let's get right into it so here's my game demo that I've made in MZ and first thing you want to do is uh, go ahead and say we're all done and everything we want to deploy it uh, for <clears throat> MZ you're gonna see that Android and iOS is together with web, the web browser so for the MV process, it's going to be the same. You want to make sure that you're deploying to the web. And we're going to be treating our iOS application as a web application in order for it to run uh, on the mobile device as a <clears throat> iOS app. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to create a new folder. I, You know, you can save it wherever you want. We're going to just click... Uh, I have this is where my game's at. Game One Project is what it's called. What was the original folder name? And I'm just gonna say deployment web. Okay. And so I'm gonna save it to this folder. And I'm gonna click this option to exclude unused files. I think this will help just save some space on your mobile application. Very quick and easy. It's a very small game. And if you haven't done so already, uh, go ahead and get Xcode from the application uh, from the App Store. And like I said, I was I'm an iOS developer, so I have some other projects I've made. But and I'm running the latest version, 12.4 at this time. So what you want to do is create a new Xcode project. Uh, you want to be on the platform iOS and build the application. Now, RPG Maker MZ. And I believe MV already published to Mac OS, so you never have to worry about publishing to Mac OS. Click Next. Uh, like I said, the developer, once you get your developer license, you'll have to put your team here, which this is my team name because it's my personal account. Um, I do recommend that if you, you will be required to use your personal name and information in order to make a developer account. That's why you see mine. Um, and you can it'll use typically use your team name here, but I customize it to use the studio name. And we'll say this is um, the demo game one, and this is just whatever your your game name will be. And you'll see that this bundle identifier is going to be this. Uh, this is very important to once you actually are ready to publish to the App Store. You'll need to link this all together. Uh, 
which I may make a separate video on connecting it, publishing it to the App Store, and all that process that you need to do. But right now we're just going to run it in Xcode, running it on an iOS device. So you want to make sure that you have Storyboard selected in your interface, not SwiftUI. Okay. SwiftUI is uh, something new that's not really necessary. So by default, you'll switch to the UI Kit app delegate and make sure your language is Swift, not Objective-C. You don't need any use of core data. I may I need more investigation of this core data in order to verify that the save, save files do carry over between app updates. So definitely something that needs to be researched. I'm going to click Next. Um, I'm just going to keep everything in the same folder. And it's going to create a new folder with the game name, Game Demo 1. Go ahead and create. And this is going to create my Xcode project. OK, so now we have our Xcode project. And you can see my iPhone's already connected. And so the first thing we're going to do is here. Uh, the tutorial that I have is uh, I'm just going to copy the code from there. It's very useful. Uh, a couple items I want to go over is before we get to that is the uh, depl deployment information. Now this will be set to the latest version if it since it's a new project. You can always change this to say iOS 12 um, if you want to support that. I do recommend testing that, but I'm going to keep it on the latest version. I'm going to remove portrait and just keep it to landscape left, landscape right, and. Uh, Right now, I'll just keep it to landscape, right, to kind of force it. But I can show additional tutorials on how to properly push it in the right direction, but then allow uh, left and right rotations. You can keep it to iPhone and Mac. And we will, and again, you'll, you also want to change the target and then the project itself to deployment. And so if you change this and you're not running the appropriate iOS version, uh, or something newer, then you'll run into issues. Okay, so if you have an iOS device that's on maybe 13, but your application, your Xcode project is expecting to run on a, a iOS 14, it won't allow you to run your project. So be aware of that. Uh, you can ignore these things. We're just going to stick to the View Controller project here, and I'll post a link to this tutorial here and it's actually right here in this link and I'm just going to copy over everything here here's the forums and it's directly from the RPG Maker web forums which I think was fantastic that they uh, were able to get this working and basically uh, what all this means is that you're using a, a WK web view in order to run your application on a uh, run a web browser inside your application and so that's why we have to push to a browser in order for it to properly run and load your data so there's one thing i got to do i forgot to do is it's expecting a a, a bundle path to www so we're going to go to my game folder and where it says deployment web, this was where we deployed, and it just gave the name game one project. What we actually want to do is change this to www. And I believe MV does this automatically um, because you, you do want to grab the www folder in MV. MZ will deploy it like this. Um, MV may look different, but you will be looking for the folder that is named www. And that's a quick rundown. Um, I haven't looked into this yet, but apparently this the tutorial says this is an alert that can pop up for errors, but I haven't seen this happen, so um, I'm not exactly sure uh, what could cause the pop-up to, to occur. Maybe there's a JavaScript issue, but that's all I can kind of think about. Um, so that's all you need there. What you're going to do next is... Um, now import those files. So I'm just going to right click on any file inside this project folder. 
because you want it to be in the same level as um, the view controller. Uh, add files. So just right click, add files, and you want to make sure you copy items if needed and then create folder references. This is very important. Otherwise, you're going to lose references to your project. Again, go to deployment and we're looking to select the www. Go ahead and add that in. Okay. It's very important that it's named www and it should have all your assets. Okay. And uh, for MZ, there's an additional step. You don't have to do this for MV, but I haven't tested for MV just yet. But you, the tutorial I followed, uh, you, you don't need to do this. So I'm going to uh, uh, command F to find, and we're going to search for uh, dot is game active, and you'll see that there's two matches for us, and it's this one. So uh, we don't want uh, to give up the focus of the of this application. You may see this like if you skip this step, your app when you run the game. It will play sounds, but it won't actually give focus to your game. So all we want to do is say return true, and that's it. Like you can delete this code if you want, but it's just going to return true immediately um, because we don't want to give focus to that. And that'll be it. And it's it's really that simple. Uh, these guys did a fantastic job. Uh, and shout out to this post. I definitely recommend they do have some additional links. But what we're going to do is let me go ahead and run this on my device and you can see it running. So I'm just going to hit play. I have my device selected. Uh, there are steps that you need to do in order to get your device connected. You can run it on the simulators if you need. And let's see. There we go. And so there we have it. I don't think you guys can hear it. Uh, because I'm recording, I. I for some reason the sounds off but um, so now I don't have to use the mouse I'm using my device I can click options and change the background settings everything I need and this is just recording my my phone itself so you can see like it if I show like the simulator it runs like very slow dang it I was hoping like I would not get any notifications Uh, but it, I, I believe the sound's not playing because uh, I'm recording right now through the screen recorder. But typically you would hear sounds. Uh, I'm using QuickTime to record my device and using QuickTime to record my screen. So now I can like move around. That's a little intro. Select the location. If you want different things, uh, I believe there are plugins that you can have that will actually give uh, like D-pad controls and whatnot, but it's very simple to get this running on your device. And I want to say this is really it for the, the tutorial. I hope this really helped out uh, getting it to run on the device. Uh, I will create a, a separate tutorial on how to publish your game to the store. It requires, and it does require the developer application or de developer account and everything you need to, um, you'll need to create a app icon and whatnot in order to publish. These are required assets, but I will talk about that in a separate story. I don't want this uh, tutorial to get too long. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope this really helps and makes it easy for everyone to uh, 
uh, published on uh, iOS, and I hope to see more RPG Maker games on uh, the mobile platform. So thanks, guys.